So the state of hiring now in 2017, regardless of what media outlet you follow, um, is that it's competitive, highly competitive for talent. There's been a real shift in the pendulum of, of who holds the keys and who holds the power in hiring, and it shifted away from where we were in 20, 2007, 2008, um, from corporate kind of employer-centric uh, power to more on that candidate side, especially for the most in-demand uh, roles and in-demand uh, uh, MVPs, if you will. I think major challenges facing the industry around recruiting and staffing, or if you are in a corporation and you're trying to recruit um, top candidates, is the ability to um, attract those top candidates, retain them in your organization, um, and uh, light them up in the work that they do. Connect them to your mission and your purpose. That's often and should be greater than the profits and the, the, uh, that you're trying to bring in for your organization. So the, the state of engagement in the work world, um, if, we, if we think about uh, what Gallup's told us over the last 13 and 14 years in their engagement survey and engagement surveys that are going out through, through other uh, uh, organizations countrywide, um, about 70% of employees are disengaged in their work, which means 70% of people wake up on Monday and aren't excited to get to work. They're waiting and they can't wait until Thursday or Friday to get into work. And um, I think that that particular uh, place that we're in offers corporations and, and people in general an opportunity to, to change the way that they approach their work um, and to be able to, to lead you know, to great innovation, to, to great growth within those organizations if someone can really find the secrets around how to increase engagement within their organization and share that vision, that engagement out to the rest of the world. I think the number one secret sauce is looking within first. Um, when people say they're struggling with talent acquisition, 99% of the time, if you haven't looked inside your house, if you haven't looked at how your um, own employees kind of know and understand your mission, uh, own it in their particular position and in their particular work day in and day out, and then drive that forward, if you haven't looked internally, it's going to be really hard to attract those folks from without so um, that you're, you're sort of trying to acquire in talent acquisition. So I think first and foremost, it's knowing um, your mission and knowing it within and being able to drive that out to, um, to the greater world. Uh, number two would just be simplifying your recruitment process. If you have multiple you know, fields that people need to fill out and your, your application process takes uh, over five minutes, you're going to see huge drop-offs in those folks that are applying to your positions. So you have to make it simple. You have to make it um, easy uh, for those top folks to apply to your organization. Make it mobile. It's got to be mobile. It's got to be that kind of one-click environment. We think about um, how people are buying, how people are uh, buying a book on Amazon or buying a, you know, much more than a book now, um, hiring a car through Uber, finding love, uh, you know, swiping left or right. It's got to be easy. It's got to be digital. It's got to be mobile. So number one is kind of connecting to how people love to work in your organization. Number two would be simplifying your process. Um, and number three would be, you know, having some aggressive tactics to go out and find them. So not being afraid in the talent acquisition space to consider your work as a uh, very close partner to corporate brand, a very close partner to your sales teams. Um, so taking this approach of going out and hunting and finding um, would, be, would be those kind of three key easy steps. Creating brand advocates, creating corporate advocates within your organization and that are and also that are without outside of your organization that um, are like-minded folks that can share your story um, creating content for digital distribution uh, where people can get to know you better doing it in an authentic way that is true to you and true to that person and true to that mission um, all are going to be critical in how uh, those top talent are seeing you I mean 4.8, 4.9% unemployment is where we are now. That's kind of the competitive story that, um, that we were talking about before. Um, but the other side is 70% are disengaged. 80% via LinkedIn are, would entertain a new opportunity for the right, um, for the right story, for the right connection. Um, and it's especially true with, our, with the millennial generation, which goes up to the age of 37. It's not just those folks that are 21 or 22. 
Um, they want to feel that their work day in and day out um, uh, makes an impact. And if you can help them feel that impact, then um, you're going to kind of create this uh, flywheel effect. You're gonna create this momentum um, around your organization. The key to retaining the talent that you've brought in, it starts with uh, that first impression that they have um, of you through, of your brand, through your job description, through that apply that I talked about. Um, but it, it continues into that onboarding process. Um, taking the time and the care to put together something that's not just tax paperwork, that's not just filling out your I-9s and copying your, uh, your IDs, all important, all, <laughs> all critical to those higher. But I think it's, it's out of the gate showing them that you've taken the time to connect, again, their work to the larger mission of the organization. You've given them clear direction as to the tools that they need and where they need to go. And then you've mapped it out past those first, say, two to four weeks. Um, you've given them milestones that you want them to hit in the first 30 days. You've given them another set of milestones once they've adopted and, and understand and are delivering in those first 30 days, another set at 60 days, and then another set at 90 days. Um, I think it's important to also have regular check-ins, and those could be both those one-on-ones that are so important from manager to the employee. They can also be from your talent acquisition, a, a stay interview to the folks that have recently placed. So you're not doing exit interviews, you're doing stay interviews, um, helpful for both the candidate but also the manager. Um, and then, um, you know, there's this idea of um, past those 90 days, not just one-on-ones, but maybe you implement a digital system. Uh, we use 15.5 here um, at our firm, and it, it allows the manager every week to get a pulse check on how their team is doing, what they're struggling with, how they are feeling, what's their engagement in their work, where are they struggling, and that informs your face-to-face one-on-ones. Um, so making it easy, again, for them to engage in, in a platform that lasts well beyond the first 30, 60, 90 days. Um, and using technology uh, as that resource. So whether it's 15.5 or another tool, um, and, uh, also helping them, we use Productivity Planner here. So I think the, the, a great struggle in anyone's work, and uh, we see it every day here, is prioritization of your work. So we've got a lot of clients, they all are our number one priority. Um, well, they all should be our number one priority. Um, and that's a lot of number one priorities. So knowing in any given day what's the most essential uh, work that you need to do to move it forward, um, what are the distractions that you need to close down, email and um, you know, social at times, so that you can focus on the work uh, has been critical to moving uh, jobs forward for us, um, moving uh, programs and project delivery uh, forward for us. And uh, it's been kind of life-changing for some of us on our team to use these, these kind of tools. And Productivity Planner is not a digital tool. It is a handwritten planner that you, that you uh, work in every day. At Shift Recruiting, the way that we stand out is we focus on the why with both parties. So many companies, most companies, most agencies, they focus on the what. What are the responsibilities? What are the requirements? What are the attributes? Check, 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 good, I'm gonna go and find them, right? That's fine, we do that too. But over and above that, if we're gonna create engagement, if we're gonna create uh, companies that understand their purpose and, and individuals that understand their purpose, you've gotta ask them why. Why is, uh, is this particular role um, the right role for you in the place that you are in your career now? We talk a lot about getting that candidate to control their career versus their career controlling them. And so I think asking, um, really pushing and probing with candidates and clients on their purpose um, and their impact in both the role and in, their co in, in the world for the company um, is, is very different than what most people are doing. Um, because that focused more on the what.